Touch points is a evidence-based practical approach to working with families, to working with professionals, to working with communities. The goal of touch points is that we have the best outcomes for children, both their health and education outcomes. Touch points are those periods of disorganization that happen right before the burst or what most people call the milestone. When we think about children's development and the process of development, we know that there's actually 12 different times during the first two years of life that we can predict that children's behavior is going to fall apart. Because that takes so much energy, other skills that they've already mastered tend to regress or fall apart. For example, a child who is learning to walk might now not sleep all the way through the night because all of their energy is going towards mastering this new skill, which means they now don't have the energy to keep those other skills going. Kids don't develop in a straight line. In fact, they have a period of disorganization that occurs before they have a burst in development. But that period of disorganization is very confusing. It's very confusing to us as professionals. It's very confusing to parents. And we know that parents are vulnerable in those periods. And so as professionals, what we want to do is we want to come alongside parents. We want to scaffold parents. Touch Points was created in order to support professionals, no matter what their work is with families to support them in their understanding of child development. We developed a training program based on Dr. Brazelton's work, his practice, his study, his research. But since that time, what has happened is as we've trained professionals around the country, the program has developed into a program that works with all professionals, works with all providers. The Brazelton Touch Points Network, it's an amazing network. It is a network of providers who all have the same focus. It's a learning community. It's a way of connecting various people who are working at a small level with families with a larger network of learning. Working with families is a really unique sort of situation. And, and when you go into a family's home every week, and sit on their floor and play with them and their child and, and help share learning about their child with them. It takes a real emotional investment. Touch Points is a framework that I've really tried to embed in, in all of the work I do with families and the principles of reflective practice, self-care, using parent assumptions and recognizing that a family brings a lot. They have a lot to offer. And in turn, recognizing what I'm bringing to the interaction just helps to guide me and allow me to be in a space where I can be cognizant of all that's impacting our relationship. One principle of touch points is using the behavior of the child as your language. When I will work with a family who's trying to understand their child's development, which may be not typical, I can say, look at your child, see how he is or she is struggling to make eye contact with you and we can describe their play as being very self-directed and if we can talk in common about what we're seeing it provides us with a common language and then I think helps the family to understand you know, if I come to make a diagnosis why I've made that diagnosis. Another good example of using touch points with a, with a case is a, a family I recently saw who was trying to understand a diagnosis of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We initially, were, I was able to use the behavior as language to help the mother in this case kind of have a way of talking about her child and understanding it. And then we're also able to use some of the assumptions within touch points, I think, to really help their relationship. So I was able to kind of use the parent assumption, uh, she is the expert in her child, um, that she wants to do well by her child and you know, make, by making those feelings explicit in our relationship, I think it set her at ease and it allowed us to form a collaborative relationship um, with this particular family. So we know that the ultimate relationship that we want to support is the parent-child relationship. The predictor of the best outcome for children is the strength of the parent-child relationship. So everything is geared toward that. Touch points working on a systems level is really important. If we think about it as a parallel process, so we think about what we're trying to do as we work with families, as providers work with families, we're really trying to scaffold them to understand children's development. And we're doing that through our relationship with them. We have to build a relationship where parents walk away feeling more competent and confident in their ability to parent their own child. Then we have to think about as providers, that providers need that same kind of support 
in working with families at the organization level that providers are working in, they need support from their organization or the system that they're within to be able to then support families. Touchpoints allows me to be a collaborative learner with a family rather than a teacher. And it allows me to go into a home and share the journey of learning with a family and help them to have a sense of mastery and competence in their role as parent or caregiver rather than give them tasks that they can complete. We support their mastery as parents and give them the tools that they need to really feel successful and competent throughout a lifespan rather than in a moment of development. How we support providers in our organizations should be the same as how we're asking providers to support families. Working with these families and I'm working with other providers and we're collaborating across different agencies. By thinking about the touch points model, I think it's really allowed me to become a better advocate for some of our families, but also better at building these collaborative relationships with other providers that are necessary for the success of the families, the children, and, and us professionally. It's about thinking together about how do we get there? How do we truly get there and partner with each other. So it really takes the kind of thinking that First Life Santa Clara County has been doing about what are all the different systems of care? How do we bring them together? How do we network and connect them? So, and not just network, but really connect providers to each other so that they can then support each other in really supporting families in the community.